acting in the following way will emanate an aura of mystery around you. It'll enhance anything you do and give you God a godlike aura that most people in today's society have forgotten how to do. This is not about manipulation. This is more so how to give people a pleasant experience in your presence. You will learn how mystery plays with a man's emotions in this video. And the majority of the video after that will be how to use it. The men and women around you, particularly men, will amplify that aura by trying to interpret you. You see, you will, you will make a man think of you more because he can't, he can't understand you. You see, the human brain is a problem-solving machine. We were, for most of our existence, we were prey and we were very weak compared to all of the other great apes. And navigating this complex field of bigger animals or even a complex field of society that we lived in during those times, even today, it added to that level of complexity. So our ability to solve and adapt to problems made us the permanent social animal and it allowed us to adapt to unforeseen circumstances. So as a result of that, when it comes to our weaknesses, it can't be stopped. Our ability to be fascinated by mystery, our, our fascination with what is not known is our human weakness and our strength. It's like when you watch a movie and Melissa the white girl is like, oh, there's a dark, there's a dark shadow with big teeth and red eyes. Let's go over there and look at it. You know, <laughs> and Tyrone and Brock, hey man, I don't like the way this is coming from. I do not appreciate this, but I gotta go, <laughs> right? <laughs> so humans just have a, a weakness for mystery and that's what creates entertainment. That's what creates the fascination in today's society. The reason why you want to remain a mystery to a certain degree, and I'm going to show you how to remain a, remain a mystery while being in a relationship with them. But generally, remember when you were a child, and if you, if you had both of your parents, the one, that fascinated, the one that was more mysterious to you was the one of the opposite sex. And, and so because of that, when you were around that parent, you felt comfortable but because you really didn't understand to be dumb. You didn't understand how different they were to you. You paid more attention. They were more complex to you. A daughter finds the dad more complex and a, and, a, and a son finds the mother more complex. There's a big gap of difference between both of them. So because of that, they begin to pay more attention to that parent. And because of that mystery, they notice more little things. They notice the facial expressions. And in fact, studies show that the, that the, that the sons, a lot of the times, integrate their mothers more than their fathers for the simple fact that their brain is just paying more attention because of how mysterious they are to them. And that's the beauty of creating a mystery, is that people will pay more attention. LeBron James is an example of that. Notice how LeBron James lately, before when he got swept from the finals, from the NBA playoffs, rather than just leaving, he says, I don't know, I think I'm good. I don't know if I'm going to play next year, but I'm going to have to think about that. And the next day, people were not talking about how he got swept. They were talking about whether or not LeBron, what LeBron James meant. And so rather than talking about the team that whooped their asses, people were talking about that mysterious phrase. People would rather talk about mystery than reality. And that's the beauty about all of this. Is that it is hijacking a deep-seated part of human nature, which we're going to talk about once. Man, because we're problem solvers, right? We, our minds get fixated on what we can't understand. It was almost like back then, before YouTube, and you, if you had a favorite TV show, you had a hope that your, your, your cable TV had that TV show. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to think about Dragon Ball GT. And I would watch clips of Dragon Ball GT or I would watch clips of Dragon Ball Z in Japan, but I never got to see it. So I remember I used to just fantasize how, dra how Dragon Ball GT was. I used to fantasize how Dragon Ball Z was. And the funny thing is that when I actually saw Dragon Ball Z and GT, it don't get me wrong, it was amazing, but it never matched what I had in my imagination. And if you learn how to keep people, particularly in that space, of fascination in that space of fantasy 
they'll, 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 they'll fantasize about you. Their insecurities will fill in the blank. And when they see you in real life, you'll take on the image where you'll look greater and larger than life itself. And because of this lack of mystery, because we have lost the, the art of mystery, we know how women's bodies look. Back then, an ankle used to turn a bunch of dudes on. We know how magicians do their tricks, right? We know how some people do their artwork. We, we know the process. We have lost the mystery. Michelangelo used to never show people how he did his art. He used to say that his art was inspired. He used to say that he just learned how to paint. He just learned how to do sculptures. When in reality, he put a lot of work into it. But he knew he understood, people of the past understood the concept of mystery. And if you know how to play that on a man, you're gonna have unforeseen influence and fascination in his mind. He's, and we're gonna explain what that does to the male psyche. And also we're gonna explain what, how other people have used the art of mystery to make a career out of it, to attract, right? To attract an audience as an artist, as a musician, as anything. If you do not know how to play up to people's fantasies by being mysterious, you're missing out on something. It's not just skills, it's not just how good you are at something, but it's also how you're able to, veil, to, to wrap it around a veil of mystery. So, an air of mystery can make something that looks completely mediocre look incredible. Like a con artist who talks about their methods but don't say what it is. I'm going to show you an example of this guy who used to, he, he was a prisoner, right? And this prisoner used to have this ability to, this ability, not this ability, to contact anyone in the world, any athlete in the world. Nobody understood why he, how he did that until he got out of prison and he revealed how he did that. But before he revealed how he did that, he, he used that ability to gain power. Why? Because he will never tell people how he did it. He never revealed his, his powers. Let me show you what he says, right? Let me show you right here. And what I did was I had, you know, I'll reveal it 40 years later. I had a friend that was the director of the Associated Press. And uh, he had every phone number for every athlete. And what I did was I had... So you can see how something so simple, he could have easily told people, oh, the way I contact you is because I have somebody who knows everyone. But you know what he did when people asked him, how did you, how did you contact me? He contacted a lot of famous athletes and he says, I do what I do. He created an air of mystery. And as a result, people were fascinated by him. People used to visit him everywhere. He used to, used to um, visit him, write to him. A lot of athletes used to hit him up, but it was because he kept the true sources of his power in mystery. Well, giving a man an air of mystery, you could lessen their willpower as a result of it. The only time when children give up their willpower is when they're expecting a surprise, when they're expecting something unexpected. People will rather have a mystery box over something that's certain. That's how humans are. People will rather have the devil they don't know over the devil that they know. Because you see people picking that over history, right? And, and, and that's because a child's tendency is it, it, that child tendency to behave. One second. To behave when we're presented with mystery. I'm sorry, I have my dog right here. To, be, to behave when we're presented with mystery is deep inside of us because deep down we're still children. It hasn't been drummed out of us that desire to understand mystery. And the reason why this works is because mystery and surprise creates space for new emotions to come, to come in and for your defenses to lower. If the surprise is pleasurable, if, 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 if your, sedu your seductive charms will enter their bodies like a venom, any sudden event creates this type of effect. Or any veil of mystery creates this type of effect. But the problem with a lot of you people watching this <laughs> I'm like pointing is that you guys have so much so many feelings of insecurity that you have no patience for the art of mystery it's not that you don't know how to be mysterious even though that's part of it but the other part of the obstacle 
is that you have no patience. You don't know, you don't take this as an art form. Any great performer, any great performer in history, and we're gonna talk about some of them in this video, played on that, played on that, played on the, on the, on the art of being mysterious. Michael Jackson, Prince, all of those people, Marilyn Monroe, all of those people played on that. We're gonna talk about that throughout this video so that you guys can apply it in your lives. And, and not just using it with men because ladies, even though this video is about how mystery plays with a man's emotions, I wanna, I wanna be able to encompass the whole field so that you can see the bigger picture and not just see it from, from the perspective of finding someone and, and, and being more charming, right? Like I said, Michelangelo played up on a lot on the air of mystery, right? So you could keep the meaning behind your work mysterious where you don't tell people the meaning behind it. Even though it might look one way, you could even name it something completely different. You can see how, myst how mystery works. It works through contradictions and that friction where they think they know it and yet you present to them an information that completely stops or, or completely halts their pattern of recognition. It makes, them un it makes them stop what they're doing and look deeper into your eyes. And that, if, if, they, if this person might be talking to a bunch of people, a bunch of girls, that will make you automatically stand out by just playing the air of mystery. Because the minute people can predict you is the minute that people start losing respect for you. It's just that simple. They, 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 humans want something that can, they cannot predict in order to respect it. The reason why humans respect nature so much is because they, can't, they, um, is because they cannot predict it. As soon as people can predict something, their, emotional, their emotions towards it lessens and they start looking for new things to solve. That's what's how humans are. Right, look at Leonardo da Vinci. He stopped painting because he mastered art. He just stopped painting. He couldn't even see a brush anymore because he just felt like he mastered it and wanted to find some other form of mystery, some other ephemeralities that the world presents. So if you have a position where you can't be a mystery from, um, from then, from here, not, like if you're in a position where you're, you're with a guy and you can't be a mystery around him because maybe you live with him, right? Then every now and then act out of character, not in a toxic way. That's not what I'm saying, people. Not in a toxic way, not hitting him, not slapping him, not that kind of stuff, but in a healthy way. For example, like it has to be, it has to be something that goes against what they think who you are, right? And, and because this keeps them around you in a defensive way, in a positive defensive position where they're trying to understand you. Even though they know you, you give them something that throws them off. It's a good puzzle for the human brain. It enhances your aura. For example, I remember I was talking to this girl and she, this girl was completely infatuated by me when I was living in Mexico. And from time to time, this girl would just sit down on the other side of the sofa and wouldn't get close. She'd be like, nah, I'm happy here. And I was like, what? So the whole time we were talking, but she, she wouldn't get close to me, right? I had to go up to her and get close to her, right? But her, 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 her lack of desire to get close to me created a mystery, it made me say to myself, why is she acting this way, you know? And that made, because I couldn't understand her, obviously I couldn't stop thinking about her as a result. Right? She was staying with me at that time, but from time to time, she would just act distant. She, would, she just would, right? And I couldn't understand why. And so can you see how that made me think of her? Can you see how that engaged my emotions? Can you see that how that made me want to get closer to her? Because I couldn't, I thought I figured her out, when in reality, I still had a lot more to learn. So if you're shy and scared naturally, pull away if he does something bad, right? If you're someone who's shy and you act as though you're not willing to walk away and the guy behaves negatively, pull away. You might think it might not work, but because you created a character of somebody who's not willing to walk away, your act of boldness of pulling away throws him off the mark and it makes him chase even harder. And it'll enhance your aura. And next time he tries to act the way he acted, he'll think about it twice. 
Because he thought he figured you out. And you took a bold action and he realized he hasn't figured you out. He has a lot more work to do. And that forces people to pay more attention to you, to be more reactive. Everything you do is a surprise because they don't know what to expect. And go with vice versa. Where if you're somebody who's, sh who's not shy, who's very assertive, you go in the, in the complete opposite direction. But make sure that the air of mystery isn't seen as something that's deceptive. Because it's not deceptive. What this is, is giving people something to play with. Giving people something to think about. Giving people something to be fascinated about. Regressing people. And allowing them to shed the adult exterior. And to act like a child in the face of mystery. To be fascinated by something. Humans urge, have an urge for that because the whole world we live in mystery has, been, has completely been taken away and anyone who provides that type of mystery and surprise is an oasis in them of itself and you'll notice people will gravitate towards you no matter what type of work that you do look at athletes athletes michael jordan was so famous and one of the reasons why he was so famous was because he rarely did interviews and people rarely knew how he really was, how his personality was. A lot, of, a lot of basketball players, athletes, we didn't know their personal lives. So we only knew them as athletes and we could only wonder how they were in real life. Yes, there is a satisfaction in knowing how they are, but there is a greater satisfaction in not knowing and thinking and pondering. It creates, it, it livens up our imagination and it makes them the center of our attention because we're trying to understand. And also it is pleasurable to fantasize and you're stripping people of that ability. Humans are not naturally, are, 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 if you really look at human animals, we're not consistent. Naturally, if you really look at people who are not trying to fit in, you, you, you're not consistent, but we have a need to be consistent. We have, we naturally deep down, we have, we have inconsistent and, and contradicting parts of our personality. We see this mostly when we fall in love. When our defenses and natural patterns crumble and we return to a state of complete helplessness. But even if that, if, if, even if the face of this reality, even in the face of this reality of where our natural tendencies crumble at the face of intense emotions, we say it's because we're, it's because it was a momentary moment of weakness. We don't blame it or that, we don't say that that's how we really are. We just say that was just an exception. That's not really me. I'm, yeah, even though in real life I'm somebody who keeps it together, but what you saw right there was just a moment of weakness, a of a moment. I'm not really like that. And you mistake the mask for reality. You think you're stable and consistent. When, but the truth is, is that you're naturally mysterious even to your own self. That's why you don't understand yourself. That's why a lot of us go to therapists to understand our emotions because they're so complex. There's a natural complexity to the mysterious, contradicting nature of ourselves. And even and when we see that in other people, we get fascinated by it because deep down, we're seeing ourselves. So trying to fit in, trying to be like everyone else, Trying to be consistent naturally strips you of your authentic mystery. So now that we understand the source of our fascination behind mystery, now that we understand how this affects men and our partners, let's talk about how to create that air of, uh, air of mystery in anyone that we meet. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, people. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys haven't purchased any of my courses, we have a special bundle deal for everyone um, so that you can purchase all of my courses, meaning you could purchase the Psychological Game of Attraction, Natural Chemistry, and Nice Girl, along with all of the bonuses. Originally, if you purchase everything without the bundle, it'll be around $400, around $500, to be honest with you. Um, but right now, if you guys purchase it, with the bundle, you guys will be able to get all of these courses, Psychological Game of Attraction, which is for women for women who are single, Natural Chemistry, which is for women who are in a relationship, Nice Girl, which is a course on assertiveness, along with all of the bonuses, Social Mastery, Practical Mastery in terms of how to master anything, Social Mastery in terms of how to master your social skills, and The Laws of Human Nature, wherein I, it's part of the Robert Greene book club I used to have. All of these 
naturally, like I said, it's 500. Now you get it at 394, which is essentially 20% off everything. Um, it's all of the work that I put in the last four years. So purchase it right now. Click on the description down below where it says pur purchase the bundle. And I'll see you guys inside. So as we talked about, mystery is, exp is naturally expressed through contradiction. Because when you look inside of your emotions, if you practice meditation, or you can purchase my course, Emotional Mastery, if you practice this, you'll notice that there's a lot of contradicting emotions inside of us. So let me, so let me show you the concept of the contradiction and how it creates an air of charisma through giving you a few examples of people of the past. So we're going to talk about the first one is Larry Bird. Larry Bird is my favorite basketball player ever. And the reason why I find him so fascinating is because you see an image of him right now, most likely you see it. He looked like, a heck, he calls himself the hick from French Link. French, um, French Link. He looks like somebody who, who's gonna mow your lawn, who's gonna spit tobacco, right? He does not look like a basketball player. Look at a video of him in an interview. Well, Casey's uh, a lot more laid back than Coach Fitch was. Uh, I feel Coach Fitch was an excellent uh, basketball coach, one of the best I've ever played for. As you can see, he does not look like a basketball player. If somebody told you he was the best basketball player in the world, you would never believe it. But when you watch him play, that, mo that, that motherfucker was a beast. That dude was, he had swag. Man, that dude had like, he... Like he would say, I'm gonna I'm, I'm shoot over, I'm gonna shoot it over you and your boy, and I'm gonna make it at the spot. Like that. So he tells Xavier, says, I'm getting ball. I said, I know I'm gonna be waiting. And he said, I'm gonna get it right here. I'm gonna shoot it right in your face. Five and Bird has the basketball. Look out, Larry Bird. I mean, that man has swag. He was a mean dude. Mother, like he was bad, and and what made it so fascinating was because he looked the way that he looked. There was a video of, of during his Hall of Fame speech. Somebody was talking about Larry Bird, and back then they didn't have they didn't have um, on TV a lot of people, so they watched Larry Bird through the they listened to Larry Bird, and there was a bunch of black guys. They would listen to Larry Bird and they were like, Bird with the jump shot, because all, all you heard that, Bird with the rebound, Bird with the pass, Bird, 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 Bird. And so by the game, by the end of the game, this guy, the, um, the guy who was telling the story, he was like, yo, Bird is a bad brother. I don't know who this man is, but this, like, this brother's bad. I couldn't believe it. Until they saw a picture of him and, 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 it, and Bird was this, this lanky, tall, white, unathletic, dude with a damn mullet they could not believe it and, and, and so that friction of looking not good but being good gave Larry Bird an aura of charisma that was unmatched because it just it just didn't make any sense so when you watch him it was like watching a ghost play because you're like what the hell like how is he doing this this makes no sense that's one example of Larry Bird another example of the contradiction is cruel and kind. For example, good parents know how to be mean, not mean, but you know what I'm saying, know how to be mean and know, and know how to be nice. Well, where if you misbehave, they'll punish you, but then they'll cook you dinner and treat you nice. That creates an aura of charisma. That creates an aura of mystery. That creates an aura of fascination that kids can't comprehend their parents because they, they see so many different sides and that's why it's okay to show kids your bad side it's okay to show kids the mistakes you've done in the past well a lot of parents try to hide it but what they don't understand is that showing your weaknesses and not just your strengths makes you more fascinating to them makes them admire you more another example is Sigmund Freud right a psychologist where Sigmund, Sigmund Freud, his, his, his style of psychotherapy was, was psychoanalysis. But the main key that made him so f mysterious to his clients, because a lot of his clients fell in love with him, was because he was distant and yet he was close at the same time. He would let you talk, 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 but he would always listen. 
and he and and because of that lack of talking that distance and you talking and expressing yourself and letting those emotions come up because you're talking created a sense of closeness to Sigmund but at the same time Sigmund was not close to them so that friction made Sigmund Freud because they barely knew much about him they only knew that he was a great psychologist because they barely knew much about him it made him more mysterious and even celebrities that you don't know their 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 personal lives are more mysterious than celebrities that you know everything about like when you think of Billie Eilish or you think of her as a mysterious woman when you think, or we're going to talk about a, an example of the lack of mystery are the Kardashians, but they're, they're something else, you know, they're, 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 they're something else, people. Oh, shit, I'm going to die, people, right? So that's one thing. So Malcolm X is another example, right, where he had contradictions. He had a, a conflicting past where he was a pimp, where he was a robber. And then he grew up to be one of the greatest civil rights leaders, a Muslim man, a man of honor, a man who talked, who talked with conviction. And that, would, and that made him mysterious. That, it made, that gave him an aura of mystery that just made people gravitate towards him. Right? Or even mystery could be done by the uncanny, by the spiritual, like having prophetic powers. The prophets of the past who used to predict the future had an air of mystery because they were linked to the spiritual. Linking yourself to the spiritual naturally gives you a mysterious aura or like, or like having psychic abilities. For example, when I was a Christian, and I wasn't psychic people, but I remember when I was a Christian, I when I would preach, it like the, the church would go crazy. Like the church would go crazy. People used to dance in the Holy Spirit, talking tongues. I we, I'm not kidding. People are like there's no videos of it, but pe you know people would tell you. I would lay hands on people and they would fall, and they were fascinated that I was. There was this, this 13, 14 year old boy who was I was skinny as a fig because all I did was fast and pray, and I used to isolate myself by by just praying and just you know connect with God. And, and they, couldn't, they couldn't comprehend how a kid who barely started Christianity, knew so much about the Bible, like, like was a great preacher, and apparently was gifted by God to have the ability to move the whole room. And that gave me an aura of mystery. Now, my problem was that I, I was too immature, but when I was performing on stage, it gave me an aura of charisma. And when people who didn't know me they were more, even more fascinated by me because they didn't understand how I was able to do that. They didn't understand how I knew the Bible more than people who've been in church for 20 years. It was because I read the Bible for six hours a day, 364 days a week, seven days a week. Of course, you, you, like, I didn't want to go to hell, people. Of course I knew more than you because I, I, I read it more recently than you did. And I would listen to um, preachers like um, 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 T.D. Jakes, Juanita Bynum, which is, she was my favorite, Derek Prince, Joel Austin, but he was on. And I was, just, I was just submerged in that. And people didn't see how deeply I was submerged. So when they, they saw the fruits of my work, they couldn't believe it. What they didn't know was that I would wake up at, in the morning, at five in the morning and pray. What they didn't know was that I was just completely immersed. They just thought they didn't. They just thought I just did it on the side. No, they did. They and because they didn't see what was behind this engine, it created a feeling, a complete and utter fascination. So linking yourself to the spiritual is one way to create an air of mystery, and not letting people know how how you gain those powers, right? It's almost like. Like, like, it's like another example of that is being innocent, looking like an innocent little girl, but being freaky in bed. That contradiction fascinates men more than looking exactly how you are. So if you're actually a freak, motherfucker, don't look like a hoe. Look like a nice Christian girl who turns it on once, they, once the door closes. That creates, you're like, oh, God, what the fuck, I didn't expect this. That's an air of mystery. Another way to create this air of mystery is being someone who, who merits attention. You're good at something. You're beautiful. You have this. You have that. But acting as though you don't want the attention, that makes you even more mysterious. And an example of that is Nikola Jokic. He's currently the best player in, in the NBA right now. And 
people are fascinated by him because he just, first of all, he does not look like he plays basketball, right? Second of all, he barely started playing basketball just 10 years ago. Third of all, he gets attention, but he doesn't want it. And yes, it, 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 people are not, don't gravitate to him as much. But I can promise you, if people tell, if people ask who's more mysterious, LeBron James, who's always talking about his opinions, who's always showing his personal lives, who's always trying to get attention, or Nikola Jokic, I can promise you it's going to be Nikola Jokic. And, and, and throughout history, he's going to have more of an aura of, of, of power simply because we barely know anything about the man. Another example is Banksy, where Banksy, his power, his true social power is through using mystery. But this is how he does it. One, he has anon anonymity. He's a man or woman who could potentially be the most famous person on earth. And he chooses not to have a personal ego identity. He just remains a mystery. People don't know who he really is. They want to know. But I can promise you, he'll lose fame. If he'll lose that, people will not... Yeah, they'll, they'll be fascinated by knowing the guy. It could be Tyrone. The, Tyrone could be Banksy by all means, right? It could be... But he'll lose that air of mystery. When people remember him, then it's not going to have that like, ooh, who was he? People are not going to debate it. It's, it's going to be no debate who was he. That's going to add to what already is a famous person. The other part that makes him fascinating is that he has, he has elusiveness. You don't know where you're going to find him. He's completely unpredictable. He doesn't want, he doesn't make any public appearances. Another part is a subversion because he plays on people's expectations. They can never know what to expect from him. But then in the midst of all of that mystery, of all of that, of all of that seriousness, he's also playful. And that contradiction creates a deep sense of fascination. And also he's a, re a rebel on top of that. Another example is Michael Jackson, people. Michael Jackson is one of the most mysterious p people in the, in, the, in the last 50 years. Michael Jackson had a, d a deeply private life, barely did interviews, barely did any albums. Barely, um, he wasn't posting albums all the time. He wasn't in circulation all the time, right? Michael Jackson looked interesting. He had a unique look to his face. And, and people were, became even more fascinated by him when he talked about being part of, the, of a, um, where he used to um, go in this like, like rejuvenating hyperbolic chamber or some shit like that, right? And people were like, oh my God, he's like a droid. Oh Lord, what is that machine? What, what does he do with that machine? That gave him an aura of power, an aura of mystery that made people want to get to know him more. But because he distanced himself from it, that friction of people wanting to know him and him saying no, what do you think happens? It makes people more aggressive. It makes people think of him more. It makes people try to understand him more. There you go, people. Right? <coughs> Another example is Prince. And what made Prince was so fascinating because Prince, first of all, he looked gay. Let's just put it just put it out there. He looked gay as they come. I mean, literally, he looked like a walking rainbow. But also, when you heard him speak, you expect him to talk like, hey man, how's it going? Oh yeah. But when he talked, he, he talked like this. Motherfucker had a deep voice for a five six dude. That dude had a deep voice. A deep ass voice, right? Why? Because he didn't look exactly how he was. And, 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 and that friction of you thinking he was gay, but he, was, he, could, he could bang your girl and having a deep voice and then he played the guitar. That friction between masculine and the feminine, which we're going to talk about, which is also creates mystery, made him look more mysterious. Made him look more fascinating to the audience on top of his top level talent. In fact, he was so mysterious that, that his name, his signature was a, was a logo. Right? <laughs> it's insane. Another example is, is, is like in the movie The Wizard of Oz. Where you didn't see how the guy was, the, the big thing, the, the, big, the big like thing of The Wizard of Oz wasn't a wizard. It was an old dude. But he was able to maintain power by creating a veil between himself and others and creating a mystery. People, we have so many ways to create mystery. Look around you in your life. Don't reveal everything. 
For example, me, I reveal my sources. But if I didn't reveal my sources, I'll look even more mysterious. But that's not the point of this channel. The point of this channel is not to raise myself up. The point of this channel is to help you guys out. I don't care about now I'm looking mysterious. As long as, as long as you know where I get my sources and you guys could go straight to that source and learn from it, I'm happy with that. I don't need to enhance myself. Another example is, is the, the hard and the soft. An example of that is Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid, where he looked like a weak old man, where he was unassuming, he wasn't muscular, but when you looked at him, when, when you looked at him about to fight someone who's bigger or multiple people, you think he wouldn't win. But because he fought people and won in, and won in incredible fashion, people were, we as an audience were fascinated. How can this older guy who doesn't look strong beat so many people up? That contradiction between looking hard and being soft. If you're a thug, a convict, who enjoys flowers and has a feminine side, you'll be, you'll be more mysterious because people say, okay, what else is behind this veil of mystery behind this person? Another form of mystery is learning how to use absence and presence, pretty much. Uh, for example, if you're in a group setting and learning, when to, learning to be the one in your social circle that is around the least often, once you establish yourself, learning to not be around them all the time creates a sense of mystery for example i had a friend mark who we all when we were in college we would invite him all the time to come hang out with us and he would just show up in random moments he was like kramer but without the cycleness and because of that he was just more more mysterious more charismatic as a result of it um other examples like i had a friend named mike who he lived in queens but he would sometimes randomly just leave and backpack backpack throughout south america and that randomness of just leaving the group, people were like, oh, yo, what the hell is Mike at? They were like, well, Mike must be somewhere in India or Mike must be, must be somewhere in, in China. And because they didn't know where he was and because of just the, uh, they couldn't predict where he was and because the, it gave him an air of mystery, which made the people around them more fascinated and they, and they surrounded him with an aura of, of, of interest. Um, other ways that you guys can do that is it's like, let's just say you're a charismatic person, right? And this is something that I had to learn because I used to be more of like an overwhelming presence to people. Like like when I was younger, um, I kind of messed up a lot because I was just too extroverted. I had to learn to, if I'm an extrovert, to get to come, up, come about it as though I'm an introvert and let people say, yeah, he's quiet at first, but then when you get to know him, he's more blah, 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 blah. He's actually very talkative, right? Um, and that will give you layers, that will give you layers that will make you more interesting, more profound. And that'll make people try to get to know you more. And when they see that extroverted personality from you, you'll be more mysterious. Or, or somebody who doesn't, who doesn't smile as often, like, uh, like, um, like a Simon Cowell from, from uh, America, America, American Idol versus Paula Abdul. Where Paula's always happy, she's fucking trying to be nice to people. But Simon is a more honest one and is not easily impressed, right? For example, I was watching a show about these guys who were making jokes. Like he, there was, it was like a podcast. And they were all trying to make jokes, but the guy wasn't laughing that much. The guest wasn't laughing. And I could sense how they were, the, more, the less that he laughed, the more they tried to make jokes. And then one time he laughed. And you can notice how everyone just like, like they were like excited that they finally got him to laugh, right? So it's kind of like those, those are all types of ways to get people to react to you, to get people to, to get men to react to you and to get them to be more fascinated by your presence. Another way to create this mystery, like I said earlier, is never revealing the secrets behind your work. Even if it's simple, don't reveal it. Do not reveal how you do it. Because by not revealing how you're doing and letting people think how you do it, that's why, look, don't get me wrong, I love Instagram and I do love how people show their work and their process, but I could promise you, if artists didn't show how their work was done, people would be more fascinated by it. I, I'm, I, could tell, I, I promise you, people will be more fascinated by it. That's why artists of the past were, were looked at as gods, because people didn't know how the process was done. An example is that guy that I told you, right, where... He had a simple process of how to find people, 
but he just never revealed the source. And as a result, people were, were, were even more fascinated by him. And also another way is holding back, right? When you're talking to people, don't reveal everything about you. Keep some facts about yourself to yourself. Learn how to drip your personality to people over time. By being slow and drip and slowly dripping your personality to people, you create more fascination. It's like it's like watching a TV show as it airs, so you gotta wait a week and or two years versus binge watching the show. I can promise you, the more emotional experience will be the one where you have to wait. But it's just more painful. But pain is pleasurable, people. Let don't let people know everything about you. If I'm an artist, painter, YouTuber, and I play basketball, and I did preaching, and I played the drums, right? I'm not, and I did, and, and I worked in mental health for a few years. I'm not gonna reveal all of that. I'm gonna I'm put some things, reveal some of that, but then let the other parts come over time. That's gonna be more fascinating. You're, you're gonna look more mysterious to the person. Also, not revealing the meaning behind your work, like I said. Keep, keep the meaning behind your work silent. When people don't know what something means, people will get will start thinking about it more deeply. Or that's how that's that's why people are so fascinated by Leonardo da Vinci. They see things in his books that 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 a part of them they just don't understand. And people are even to this day, Leonardo was veiled in mystery. For example, Leon, people didn't know Leonardo's anatomical studies. They thought he was a genius, but they really didn't know how deeply. His genius went. People, they, they, because he couldn't show people. Because he, he, he used to dissect people, not alive. He used to dissect them, and draw the anatomy of it. Right? He didn't mind the stench. He wasn't afraid of the dead bodies, and he didn't mind being alone for hours at night with dead bodies. And he had the artistic ability to look at it and draw. So he was unique in that sense. But he had to keep it private, or else people, he could have gotten in prison for it. And people found out about his anatomical studies years after he died. And, and, and then they found out about his books. And so finding out his, his how other sources of knowledge that he had made him more fascinating. And then, and then people discovering new paintings of his in the last 50 years after thinking we knew it all, elevated him to stratospheres that were even greater. Even people stealing the Mona Lisa and people thinking, what's the mystery? How was it stolen? Where is it? People wondering where it was and then reappearing gave the whole myth of Leonardo da Vinci a more fascinating aura. Also, keeping silent creates a, a veil of mystery. We talked about the power of silence, right, in our videos. How the power of silence allows people to think of you more like even even if you're texting someone and not responding like for example it makes people say okay why are they not responding what's going on what's going on or 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 if you if, if you're dating someone and they never text you at the 8 p.m you're gonna be thinking like, what the fuck is going on like you're gonna want to know why is why doesn't this person ever text me after this amount of time Another way is uttering ambiguous statement. Jesus was perfect at that. Jesus never directly told people how to find the kingdom of God. He always used metaphors. He always talked in metaphors. Rather than saying people, telling people exactly what, uh, how, what something is, use a metaphor and give them that puzzle so that they can think about it. And the example is like koans, Zen koans. If not, if not now, when? Or another example is, look around you and ask yourself, what's wrong with this moment? And you become instantly present. For example, somebody asks me, how do I meditate? I just learned to tell people this. Breathe, feel, and be still. Know that you're breathing, know that you're feeling, and be still. And you walk away. If you just let people, it, that just that. As simple as that sound, it's, it sounds way more profound than me explaining to you how to meditate, right?
let me show you what uh, how you could talk in a way that sounds mysterious in sphinx like right these are the notes that i took using metaphors and analogies hey missy i'm working here missy <laughs> using metaphors and analogies what missy the metaphors and analogies can provide a powerful way to evoke imagery and emotion without being too direct and specific right another way is using paradoxes and, con and, and contradictions paradoxes and contradictions can be intriguing and thought-provoking and can create a sense of mystery and complexity for example the only constant change is change the more things change the more they stay the same for example even michael jordan said this the ceiling is the roof people were like what does that mean what does that mean the ceiling is the roof oh my god that's crazy it, motherfucker, it makes no sense but it, that made him sound more profound Another example is using open-ended questions. Asking an open-ended question can invite, can invite reflection and contemplation and can create a sense of in, in, in inquiry and exploration. What is the meaning of life? What is wrong with this moment? Or thinking to yourself, at, or me telling you, to be present, ask yourself this. I wonder what my next thought is going to be and just wait to see what happens next. Oh, or to all of those things, make people think and, and by you being the instructor of it it gives you an aura of mystery another way is using poetic language poetic lang language can be rich and evoking and can create a sense of beauty and depth right like like the sun like me saying it's things are inevitable like the sun rising up in the morning right or like or like dicks are like boomerangs they always come back right <laughs> right or like or like um robert green talks about how the more you study the more you try to um, the, the more you get into a the more you get into the path of mastery you will find a truth like a drill um like like a drill um, um, um piercing through the wood through its motion right all of those things evoke an imagery in your mind that gives you the way that you talk a poetic and sphinx like mystery and that will just makes you look even more um valuable another way is using vague and abstract language using vague and abstract language can create a sense of ambiguity and, and mystery and can allow the mystery to interpret and fill in the gap, gaps it's like um uh, deepak chopra does this a lot where there's, there's even a meme that he says something mysterious and it sounds profound in reality it's not the sky it's like the quantum mechanics of the world binding together like some shit like that make it sound deep and profound and you're gonna sound like you're saying something incredible when in reality you're just saying nothing all you're doing is invoking people's imagination and and that's why like i like i said one of my favorite ways to, if people tell me what do i teach i stop explaining to people everything that i teach i just tell people that that i teach meditation and when they ask me how do i do it I just tell them the following, right? I just say, breathe, know that you're breathing, and then I leave. Like, I just say, just breathe and know that you're breathing. And like, what do you mean by that? And I'll say, just think about it. As long as you just breathe and know that you're breathing. Sit and know that you're sitting. Look and know that you're looking. Hear and know that you're hearing. That will communicate so much more than me giving you insane instructions. And that's how the Buddha talked like that too. He talks about the righteous man knows that he's seen, something like that. I forgot. By the way, I didn't come up with that because of him. Seriously, I just, through my own observations, and then I started reading the books of the Buddha, and now I'm like, oh, fuck, he's saying the same shit that I said. Are you saying you're the Buddha? Calm down, listen, Jesus Christ. <laughs> my Lord. No, like I am the opposite of the Buddha people. I am uh, an evil Buddha, <laughs> right? And that contradiction also, what I said, creates a certain sense of like, hmm, what's going on here, right? So another way to create this sense of mystery is to embrace your masculine and your feminine, right? You have to understand, we all have an inner man and an inner woman inside of us. We all possess the traits of the masculine and the feminine because of our parents. We come from a feminine and a masculine. That's the, that's the source of our existence. We also possess traits of the opposite parents of our sex. 
boys are more prone to imitate their mothers and their empathy and girls are more prone to imitate their dads and their and their masculinity and their strength the child would then absorb the positive and the negative qualities of the parent in an unconscious and profound way and one of the reasons why the child tends to it tends to tends to take in the parent of the opposite sex is because because a child doesn't understand that parent and because the child does not understand that parent he's gonna think deeply about the parent he's gonna be forced to observe the parent even more because he doesn't understand it he understands that the parent of his of his uh, who's of similar sex but the opposite sex parent there is a mystery behind that parent like I talked earlier and because of that their attention on them focuses even more because they don't understand it and they, and they need to understand it because the child is completely dependent on them and as a result as we grow up we tend to separate ourselves from our parents to become individuals which is the natural process of growing up the boys then tries to be more masculine based on society expectations and the girls tries to be more feminine but in the process they over identify with the uh, um, uh, with those qualities emphasizing the roles and the qualities this will cause them to repress parts of their character that are naturally mysterious this girl who feels like a girl senses inside of her that there's a there's an inner Tyrone inside of her and it confuses her because it doesn't go with society's expectations. So they suppress that natural, mysterious quality that makes her more magnetic. And the boys do the same thing as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the guys that get the most poom poom from what I when, when I go to art school are the guys that look the most gay. That's just the truth. The guys who look the most gay are able to get away with so many things because they, they get, <laughs> we're not even go there, man. But that's true, man. Like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? How the hell do you do that shit? And then I'm like, yo, this guy, I thought he was gay at first, man. I thought he wanted to, I thought he wanted to tap my booty. But then I realized, no, he's just straight as a whistle. He just looks gay. And that gives him an extra sense of fascination with the women, right? And so the boys would emphasize, and so this will cause them to repress part of their character. Losing that, look at, look at my dog. Missy, what are you doing, Missy? Missy! <laughs> Losing that natural sense of mystery that comes with, the, with our natural feminine and our natural masculine. So if you learn to embrace your feminine and your masculine, as, I, as, as we're going to talk about right now, you will emanate an aura of mystery unwittingly. Unwittingly, even if you even if you're not trying to, you're gonna get it. It's like lesbian women; they get pissed off that so many dudes like them more than straight women. I'm telling you, because you're just more mysterious than the average woman. The people around you, as a result of your mystery, as a result of the contradictions you portray, will amplify that aura by trying to interpret you. So it's not just the fact that you're a contradiction; is that what well, is that the, the 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 effort that your brain is making to understand you? That narrowing of the focus of trying to understand this puzzle of you will give you an aura of charisma and mystery. So you got to look within yourself. You want to you wanna find, you, you see, you have to not care what people think ab about you. you. You just have to. You have to, you first start not caring what your parents think about you and you got to risk disappointing them. You have to risk seeing, getting that, those disappointing looks in order to find your true self. They're going to want you to be conservative. They're going to want you to be consistent. But if you really want to apply this, you have to get out the ranch, disappoint them, and embrace who you are. So if you're just flaming gay, you got to flame it out, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be a walking rainbow. Me, when I was a kid, I liked playing with dolls. I remember I used to try, I tried on my mom's shoes. And I remember I had neighbors and they saw me wearing like high heels and they were like, oh, wow, you like wearing high heels, huh? And I was like, no, nah, I'm just trying it out. It was fun. And they were like, oh, wow. D deep down, they were like, oh, wow, you're gay as fuck. <laughs> right? Like, you know, like they were like, oh, wow, this guy's gay. In reality, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. But I was just curious. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a lot of femininity about me and I didn't like it. And I felt insecure. And so I overcompensated by being, trying to be super masculine. When I, in reality, I just look like a fucking idiot, people. And then as I grew up, 
as you might see with this channel, I became more comfortable. I started to dress how I wanted to dress. I saw, I noticed that it was okay for, to, for me to have some gay tendencies, even though I, I wouldn't talk a dick, people. I wouldn't touch it. I don't want to get near it. I don't even want to threesome with a girl and a dude. I don't want that, none of that kind of stuff. But I became okay with the potential of being gay, even though I'm not. You, know, you get what I'm saying? Mm, he's fucking denying it a little bit too hard. He could be gay. <laughs> Open your mind, Alexis. <laughs> right? So you have to find that. So one, some of the ways to embrace your masculine and your feminine is to simply start doing things that are stereotypically feminine or masculine, right? So if you're a feminine woman, just do things that are masculine. That's why men love women who do sports, do jujitsu, learn how to clean a car, learn how to fix a car. If you're a man, learn how to be good with kids. As long as if you have a masculine edge to you, learn how to be good with kids, learn how to paint. Learn how to volunteer, love dogs. That's why the guys who have dogs taking care of an animal, you gotta understand an animal is the second, th is the second closest thing to a kid. You, you give off a parental vibe and so it looks attractive in a man. Learn how to embrace and do things that are stereotypically of the other gender or even dress a little feminine. Find out what women wear and, f and see if you like it, if you feel comfortable with it. And if you're a woman, do the same thing. Personally, I get fascinated when a woman has a fem masculine edge. Every girl that I've been in love with had a masculine edge to her. I just, I, I just want her, just like you know, tap that ass and let me quite honest with you, man. <laughs> it means you're gay. <laughs> well, well, again, everyone has natural fantasies in their minds, right? I may not be gay, but I'll bang a girl who has a masculine edge to her. I don't mind short hair in a girl. I'll fuck you too. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right? <laughs> so that those contradictions give you it's like women who wear baggy shorts now, man. I saw a girl the other day wearing baggy shorts. She was like she was wearing friends, right? And she was wearing like she was she had boxers on, but also she was wearing like the the short the, she looked like she was sagging, right? And I'm like, yo, she, she looked kind of cool, man. I was like, yo, girl, uh, she was this white girl. And I was like, yo, you, I was like, yo, you, are you thugging or something? She was like, oh, you know, I just like the, I like the shorts. And I was like, yo, what gang are you from, man? You look, you just thugging it out here, man. You know? So, so that creates, that makes you more fascinating as a woman, right? And as a man in general, embracing both sides of your, of your, of your masculine. So you don't have to force it. Observe in your life whenever you see something that's masculine and that you like it embrace it wear it just wear it who cares just wear it I, like find out if you like it for example you know those like um i don't know why i have this on me <laughs> i don't know why i have this on me people but you see this right these are things that women wear like this right i don't know don't ask me why I have this on, right? <laughs> My dog thought it was food. <laughs> but you know the, the shirts that go all around like that, right? I like that kind of stuff. But that's usually associated with gayness, man. So be before I wouldn't wear it, I would close my mind to that. But I'll be down to wear it. It looks kind of nice. I think it'll fit my style. And the only reason why I would wear it is because it fits my style. The point is that I don't limit, I don't have this limiting thing where if it's not masculine, I don't wear it. Now I'm like, if I like it, I like it, despite if it's masculine or not. And that makes you look more attractive, people. That's just how it works. It's like this guy in school wears eyeliners. He's really like, he gives off this gay vibe, but he's fucking straight. And a lot of girls like him. If you're watching this, good for you, my man. You know who I'm talking about. But. He, 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 he doesn't limit himself. He doesn't just say, let me go to the man section. He just says, okay, let me see what I like. And that also goes with career goals. That also goes with the people who you choose to date. All that kind of stuff. Now, outside of embracing the masculine and the feminine, the other part is embracing your shadow side, right? You see, everyone has a shadow. Every single human has a shadow. And what you want to learn to be, as Robert Greene calls it, is to be an authentic, an authentic animal. Humans are naturally not drawn to whatever seems proper. Like a DJ, like DJ Academics, as an example, 
He's, he talks about hip hop, but he's mad ratchet with it, right? We are drawn to the imperfect animal because that's the charm in dogs and babies. Dogs and babies, especially babies, Jesus Christ, are completely imperfect. They are naturally unpredictable and polarizing as a result. They don't disguise their contradictions. They present it to us with no shame. They'll shit and look at you straight in the eye and say, what you looking at? Where you from? <laughs> right? The wickedness and saintliness creates this charisma. An example of that is Rasputin. We're going to show a picture of Rasputin. Rasputin was considered a saint during his time. A man who applied a lot of the strategies that I teach. He was a spiritual man. He looked like a spiritual man to the point where he smelled and he, he had like a vow of like just spirituality. Everything about him looked like a humble person. But he had these intense eyes that completely contradicted the humbleness with, with his eyes. But also, outside of that, he probably had a wicked side. Well, he'll bang you if he could. He'll be like, if you want to repent, you first have to sin with me. Right? And, and people will fall for that shit, man, because he had healing abilities and that kind of stuff. So he was aligned with the spiritual. And all of that thing, all of those things of, for example, when he would meet people. And this is something that was funny is that I used to do that when I was younger, when I was a preacher. But it was because, look, people, look, I, I, I don't, we're far in this video. So a lot of you guys are not going to be here. So I'm going to tell you guys something that I don't tell people. All right. And the reason why I don't tell people. It's because it, 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 people will look at you differently. People will look at you as some spiritual being when I tell people this. But when I when I was a, when I was younger, God again, I'm I'm only I'm only saying this because it, it goes with the video. But when I was younger, I always had a following because I was a preacher. And one thing God used to, used to talk to me. God used to talk to me. I mean, I, I'll say the story. I'll say the longer story at another time. But I don't like to mention this too much. Even some of my friends don't know this. But he used to tell me things about people. He used to tell me what people were going through. And one of the things that God would tell me to do is put my hands over them. And I would just look at them. And sometimes a person would look at me and I would just tell them to be quiet and so I could listen to God's voice. And I would just do that. Sometimes they'll, they'll start trembling. And I would literally feel the presence of God, people. I don't know if you ever felt the presence of God. It is a real thing. And I will speak in tongues. And people, if you don't know how speaking in tongues is, let me tell you, let me describe it to you. Speaking in tongues is almost like a Freudian slip. You know when you say something by mistake? Imagine a, a Freudian slip, but for a whole 10 minutes, where you speak and it sounds like another language and you cannot help it. I've experienced this with DMT and ayahuasca, where I would speak in tongues. And I would experience the voice of God talking to me when I take DMT. And one time, God, when I took DMT, he told me, oh my God, I completely, I completely forgot about this, man. It's crazy, man. He told me that the voice you heard as a child was me. I was that voice you used to hear. And, and I remember people, preachers used to come to the church where I used to go to. And they, they always told me the same thing. You will go throughout the nations and heal people and preach the word of God. Like they told me in Spanish, irás a las naciones y vas a predicar la palabra de Dios. Y, va, y con el don de sanar, vas a sanar multitudes. <clears throat> and I thought that was just about Christianity. And it's like, I, I pondered about this. I'm like, oh my God. This, that's the shit that they're talking about. This what I'm doing right now. I'm like, oh my fucking Christ. Christ on the cross, that's insane. Today's a Sunday too. And people just had this treated me like like I was this like chosen one. <laughs> and but I had no ego behind it. I was just I felt like I was a messenger of God, but I didn't understand the type of power that I could give you. Now when I was younger, I remember I remember girls used to come up to me and be like, Can you preach to me the word of God? And they would try to seduce me, but I didn't want to go to hell because I knew fornication was a sin. So I wouldn't do anything with them. So I would have girls just trying to hook up. <clears throat> but I just wouldn't because I would just, that's not, you know? I wasn't, at that time I was legit, like, practicing it to the, to the T. I mean, to the T, people. And that just, 
it just drew people who would follow me and I would have to tell them, yo, it's the word of God. And I'm happy that I wasn't a corrupted person. I'm happy that I never had an ego where I wanted to create a cult-like following because you could legit create a cult-like following with those powers. That's just a fact. And even to this day, I cannot replicate that. In terms of those, the ability to talk to people and to talk to God and to lay hands on people, and they fall, I can't do that. I really believed, and to this day, it was God. I really do. Like, I don't know what else to say about that. You know? And that's why I never abused those powers because they came from something greater than myself. God himself. I don't know. And one time I had a girl, she was my, she was my roommate. And I told her about it, and she was like, I told her about the DMT, and she was like, can you, can you talk to them for me? And I was like, oh, no, nah, oh, no, her name, Amina, she's, she's so adorable, <laughs> yeah, Amina. And I was like, look, man, I'm gonna give it a try, but I can't promise anything. And I took it, I took the DMT, and I, I, I didn't hear the voice. And people ask me, how does that voice feel like? Now, imagine, talk, talk in your mind, say hi in your mind, right? Okay, you can hear that, it's you. It's, it's a little, it sounds a little quiet. When it's God, it feels like your voice is here, but it feels like God is speaking in your mind and it's coming from like a thunder, it's coming from here. Like, poof, you can feel it in your head, right? You can, it's undeniable that it's God. It is a voice that's deep, exactly how you would imagine it. And I sensed in her when I, was, when I took the DMT, I was feeling it, I could just sense that she was seeking for something. She was in a seeking mode. She, she was hungry for something. That's what I told her. And, and, and I remember telling her, I was like, look, man, they told me some things and I, I can't tell you what they are because I told her that. She was like, no, you gotta tell me, motherfucker. You gotta tell me what that is. That's how the mystery plays, right? <laughs> like, but that, 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 that experience, those experiences completely changed my life. And, and thinking about it now is insane. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I keep going, right? So embracing your, your shadow side, the wicked and the saintliness, right? I could promise you, if I, during those years, if I was trying to seek women and I was just trying to bang them, that, 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 that would have turned crazy, people. I, that, 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 I mean, I, I, I legit would have started a YouTube channel and I would, because I remember I, I, I used to create lesson plans and it would have been like a cult-like following. I know that for sure. And I'm happy that I'm happy that naturally I had a lot of love for people because I wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, ever since I was a child, I had a deep desire to help people. I got an incredible. That's why I, I took jobs that, I, that didn't pay me much. I studied psychology. Psychology is not a career for money, people. It just isn't. I could have picked some. I could have picked any other thing, but I just decided I wanted to help people. Okay, let's get going to the energy. They don't disguise their contradiction, like Rasputin, right? Rasputin had the, the contradiction of Rasputin was that he was he was a he was a spiritual man, but he had a big dick, which is he's known for that. He predicted the future, and also he was sexual, and that contradicting that contradiction made him more fascinating. And the eyes, the evil eyes he used to give, he would look at people to sense their soul. He would like that serious. And when he looked at when he when he met new people, he would look at them, right? And I could sense auras. Because of Christianity, you develop spiritual, um, you just develop spiritual sense of people, right? And that's what allows me to do this job. But you, but you just don't abuse it, right? Like, like if Rasputin did, abuse that ability. He would look at people, serious, and the people were thinking, okay, what, he's, what is he thinking? And then he, then he would like, he would hug him. Serious? And then he's like, oh, okay, good. I saw your spirit, right? And that mystery, that mix of like, gave him that aura of mystery. You narrow, they narrow, what he does is that you narrow your energy into the eyes and calm the body. So he would look deeply, put a lot of energy in the eye and everything around him was relaxed. It's like when you're punching. You, you punch, but you punch in a relaxed way. When you punch, keep it relaxed until the last moment you stiffen up. You don't punch stiff, you stiffen at the end, the relaxedness, right? And it's the same principle. 
you create that charismatic effect. What you must do is allow the dark inside of you and the light to mix and get rid of your subconsciousness and stop thinking what people think of you when you bring out your dark and your light and discomfort of what others are going to think of you. You become genuine as a result. Even if people condemn your dark side, they deeply admire it. It becomes magnetic. It, it's magnetic because a lot of us, when we're fascinated by people, it's because they have something we don't have. And naturally, when we find somebody who's unrepressed, like an animal or a child, we're fascinated by them because we're seeing our potential. We wish we were as unrepressed as they are. And because of that, it's because the shadow is pretty much the parts of ourselves that we don't accept. And, and, that disc and, that, and that is really a big part of our humanity. A lot of people think humans were naturally peaceful animals. We weren't. We were violent. And we try to suppress that reality. It, but as a result, when you go throughout your whole life repressing that part of yourself, that part of yourself that makes you mysterious, that darkness is more mysterious than light people, it is repressed. And so when you get older or something bad happens or somebody makes you mad or you get disappointed, that repression comes out like a thunder, like a clap of thunder, like, an like a volcano erupting. And, and then you'll start feeling the repressed emotions and you'll start thinking evil thoughts. It's like when it's like when somebody makes me mad and I and, and which is very rare now to be honest with you. I, I remember I used to wish the worst on them. I'm like, man, I hope you fucking fail. I hope you trip and hurt your toe. Right? But then I'm like, when I calm down and I'm like, you know what, never mind. But that's my dark side, right? That's my darkness, and you guys can see it somewhat in my channel. And so you'll have all of those unrepressed, uncontrollable emotions that are really that really makes you feel bad. <laughs> Missy's looking like a look at her little thing <laughs> in her mouth, <laughs> right? You will have all of those uncontrollable emotions because you're just not acknowledging it. If you begin to acknowledge those, the darkness in you, the dark sh shadow partners inside of you, they won't come out as with as much intensity when things go bad because your shadow side comes out when things happen that you cannot control, like a midlife crisis or a breakup. The shadow is either the positive or the negative. It is only negative for my con from conscious point of view, but it's neither positive or negative. It just is. We choose what becomes our shadow side, right? If you live in a conservative culture, your liberalness will become your shadow. If you live in a liberal culture, your conservativeness will become your shadow. It's like living in New York City. Don't say anything that sounds too conservative. So you repress it and you don't say conservative things around certain people. The shadow is contrary, so, so it is immoral and incapable with our conscious personality. What we want is to make the darkness conscious, become, because of, because of darkness, because of darkness, light is light pretty much, right? So the shadow is contrary to what we have chosen to become conscious of, right? That's pretty much the whole point. It is the attitude that is opposite of our consciousness, of our conscious self. We have a conscious self of being a positive person and our shadow will be our negative, dark and self-destructive person. It is what we compensate with from our other sides of our personality. If you feel insecure and you're a man, you'll want to be super masculine and you repress your femininity and vice versa. The shadow is also the major archetypes. Different cultures have different types of shadows. Different families have different types of shadows like family secrets. Or you are about things, things that you've done in the past. People who you meet online have a heavy shadow because you don't know their history. You don't know the people who they killed. You don't know the people who they cheated on. You don't know the friends they betrayed because you don't have no context about their past. Or you have no idea about their shadow until you marry them or until you move in with them. When we go through midlife crisis though, when something happens that's bad, then the, the veneer cracks. And then we can see, we can have a glimpse into their shadow. And the emotions that come out are very primitive and they are hostile and they cannot control it. And so we're able to see those hostile, dark emotions that they're repressing. Every part of us that we love becomes hostile against us if we don't embrace or discover our shadow side. Right? So all you have to do is just acknowledge your shadow. Acknowledge the times when you just wish harm on people and you don't do it. Acknowledge the times when you have an unconscious dark desire. And, and, and don't just repress it. Ask yourself, what does that say about me? And don't feel shame. Just, just observe it. Acknowledge and accept your shadow. That's all you have to do. The next thing is identify. 
and it takes time write it down observe your thoughts become present apply mindfulness and you'll be able to see the shadow even more when it becomes conscious it'll just integrate into your personality like me i i notice i just have an evil look like i like i just do right i have this mischievous look about me sometimes that's part of my shadow because deep down there's a part of mischievous there's a part there's an evil side to my personality right i'm not gonna kill you but i'll laugh if you fall <laughs> you know what i'm saying working with a therapist or a coach practicing self-compassion will also allow you to know your shadow without being afraid of it using creativity to embrace your shadow so acknowledging how you're projecting yourself onto other people how how acknowledging where the source of your toxic attraction to certain people come from acknowledging all of those all of those repressed emotions when somebody hurts you and feeling it without repressing it and pushing it away when you feel sad or angry or depressed you don't try to distract yourself you feel that shadow feel that heaviness feel the gloominess and it'll become integrated into your personality and enhance it right and all every form of art that's ever been famous has a shadow element to it so we have talked about all of this about how mystery plays with a man's emotions but also how to apply it into your life this is a very deep and in-depth topic it took me all morning to come up with it so if you enjoyed this content please hit the like and subscribe button and make sure to hit the notification and if you enjoy this and want to work with me click in the description down below where it says work with me one-on-one -on -one, and i will see what we can work out i promise i won't bite <laughs> okay, so i never detail to you guys the kind of coaching packages that i have to offer so let's talk about this right so if you guys work with me one-on-one -on -one, you guys can get all the 15 minutes 30 minutes and 45 minutes calls starting at 120 and finishing at 2.40. I don't do one hour call because it, it never felt necessary to do one hour call. And most importantly, the phone calls, as you'll know if you purchase it, are 100% private. And if you wanna save up on multiple sessions, what you guys can do is purchase a bundle, right? Where you guys can purchase three sessions at a discount, right? Whereas you originally 270, 720, you could get it for 600. Um, three 30 minutes call will be, naturally will be three uh 540 this time it will be 450 and and then and etc right? and also i have something called coach in a pocket where you guys can hire me for a whole month and that's it starts at 1500 a month but you guys have access to me for a whole day like it starts at that so it's like for two or three times a week you guys have access to me 24 for that for those 24 hours so if you guys have like an ongoing relationship thing that needs to be managed and you need me in your pocket instantly that's the package to get first but i initially recommend you purchasing one of the one-on-one -on -one sessions first so that i could assess your situation and if I feel like it needs more time, then yes, you guys can do that. Another thing that we have is that you guys can ask email questions with a, with a character limit of 2K, where for $90, you guys can ask me a question. And those videos, those um, email questions, you guys can make it um, very specific so that nobody knows it's you because they're the ones that I make on YouTube, right? But if you guys want the private ones, get the one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Uh, and one last thing is that if you order a one-on-one -on -one session with me, you guys can also could purchase any of my courses at 50% off. All you got to do is just ask me and I'll just, whichever course you want, you can get it at 50% off. So um, the the one-on-one -on -one coaching costs are things that are made for, to be private, specific, and straight to the point. All right. Click in the description down below to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and I'll see you guys there or I'm closing the channel.